My hat falls off when I do cartwheel. I'm Wasteland Firebird, and we are at the Broke Village Fair in a place called Broke, New South Wales. One thing Sydney does is they put pretty lights in their tunnels. Might be a waste of tax money, but it's pretty enjoyable. I'm a space traveler, and I'm a time traveler. I'm traveling through space and time right now. We're on our way to a thing called Broke Village Fair. It was recommended to us by a commenter, and so I thought we should check it out. I have no idea what it's about. Subaru Lavorg SCI. We did not get this in the U.S. It's the WRX motor inside a station wagon. We had the hatchback WRX for a few years, but we haven't had that in a long time. So I get really excited when I see the Lavorg, but unfortunately they did not offer those in a manual. People do violate speed limits in Australia. It's just that they all develop this weird sense of where you can do it and where you can't. They learn where the cameras are and where the police like to hide. And they go very fast in certain places. And everywhere else, they travel at exactly the speed that is written on the sign. And if you're wondering if I have ever violated the speed limits in Australia, well, yes, of course I have. One amusing thing about driving in Australia is they have these badges of shame that they attach to your car if you're a learner or if it's a provisional tag. There's the L for learner and P is it for provisional. If you're on your L plate, I know there are restrictions about speed, I think. Is that right? Yeah. You can only go so fast. Yeah, same with your P's as well. And there, so there are speed, extra speed limits if you have an L or a P plate on your car. I hate it when they lower speed limits on a hill. Yes, I realize there are slower vehicles on hills, but you know what else? It's very easy to get your car stopped on a hill because you're going up a hill. You're going against gravity. It's not dangerous. Oh, look at the Land Cruiser. Mahindra. I've never spotted a wild Mahindra before. I believe they're made in India. Mitsubishi Pajero. Do I get in trouble if I curse in other languages on YouTube? GWM? Maybe it's a Great Wall, maybe? That's a Chinese brand? Gold coin donation. An American would have no idea what that means. It means a dollar or two dollars. Because the dollar coins are gold and the two dollar coins are gold. They're not real gold. So we saw one of these at one of the other recent events. Was it all Ford Day? It's just a really good looking ute and I just can't stop looking at it. I think the back's a little better than the front. Holden badge is purple here. Look at that. Oh, and, and this, and look at that hood. It's not a hood ornament. It's a, it's another badge and like, just gorgeous colors. It's got a pinkish purple and blue and red. There's a line in the middle. Something GTS, neon green. Holden, Monaro maybe. Yes. Color. The limiest lime that ever limed old Holden that I've just never seen before. This is like an alien spaceship from another planet. It has some kind of cryptic markings on the hubcap. Oh no, it's you have to turn upside down and then it becomes a, a lion. Speaking of lions, when we did the Holden video and we went to the old Holden factory, they had little bits of the plant preserved. So one of the things was on the glass 
entrance doors, they still had the lions from the Holden plant. And the funny thing about it is they named the place Lion's Gate Offices or something like that. They used the lion as part of their naming scheme for the building. I thought that was really cool. And I don't think I noticed that until I watched the video. Somebody has lovingly handcrafted a wooden tray for this ute and then refrained from using it because it's too lovely. Holden Sunbird. I think we had a Pontiac Sunbird at some point in the US, but it didn't look like this. Pontiac Firebird. So usually when I see a car at an Australian car show that we get lots of in the United States, I say, oh, this is boring, but no, this will never be boring to me. Smokey and the Bandit is just one of the best movies of all time. Hal Needham was a very hit or miss director. If you get excited about watching Smokey and the Bandit and Cannonball Run, you might say, oh, I should watch uh, Hooper or Megaforce. <laughs> you should probably check those movies out, yes, but they're of a very different caliber than Smokey and the Bandit and Cannonball Run. But this, this is formative for me as a child, not so much because I watched it as a child, but because I wanted to watch it as a child. I don't think I was allowed to watch this movie when I was a child. But at some point I got old enough to watch Smokey and the Bandit and oh, what a wonderful day that was. Okay, maybe I need to make an exception to my rule about the, the primary color rule and the secondary color rule. Primary colors are boring except for yellow. Yellow's good. So purple, orange, green, and yellow, those colors, those are the best car colors. I thought we had Fords. No, different Fords. Yeah. I thought we had GM. No, we have different well, Holdens. That's a GM. That's, yeah. that's a home, you know, right. from General Motors. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but it's all but, different. I remember reading that the reason they didn't take the same cars and just transplant them to Australia is they couldn't handle the roads. No, they couldn't. You needed like more durable cars for Australia. So yeah, yeah they're better cars. Well, when they brought the Ford Falcon out, which is, uh, did you have them in the States? A Falcon? We had a Falcon, but that was back in like the 60s yeah, and then we well, stopped when they selling first them. brought them out to Australia, yeah. they didn't upgrade their suspension and they were a bit of a failure. And, and the next model coming out, they were made for Australia. That's, that's what I was thinking of, it was the Falcon. But yeah. then we stopped selling the Falcon in the US. And so then you guys have this glorious history of the Falcon that yeah. we don't have. Yeah. Can I follow you, mate? Oh, yeah, totally. I've seen you all over YouTube and everything. Totally, right? yeah. Like your videos, mate. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's good to see you. Yeah, it's cool. It's I awesome to be here. If you're going to be out this way. Yeah, this yeah. is huge. Yeah, yeah, this is. I didn't know it was this big, but yeah, some of the commenters said I should come to this. Yeah. I'm really glad we did. It was yeah. like a few hour drive. It looks like it was worth it. Yeah. yeah. This is awesome. You've been up right around there. I haven't even gotten there yet. No, Sandman up there. There's, There's Sandman? Sandman. Okay, well, that's I where. I haven't seen that. No. That's where we're headed next then. I haven't seen the board, but the, the, no, the. You haven't seen the sundown. Well, sundown or drifter. That's the thing. Is what I need next is a drifter because I think they're the most rare of them all. They are. Fendi badge, so I, I'm unclear what you call this. It looks like a Monaro. Oh, it has another nice wooden bed. This might be even fancier than the other one. This one's all shiny lacquered. So this is the Leyland uh, P P7? No, P76? This looks almost like a hearse. If you don't put windows in the back and you have a, a big station wagon and it's black, it starts to look like a hearse. I'm not sure I'd want to crawl into the back of that. It's a Chrysler something. We're gonna see a lot of Chrysler somethings next month at all Chrysler day. I'm gonna say a lot of stupid things about cars I don't understand. It's not just car culture that's different in Australia, it's hot rod culture. And so you come to a different country and you see how they interpret some of the same trends, but they also add their own style to those trends. I've done this twice before, but we're gonna do this a third time. Subaru Brumby. Okay, I have a story about these that I forgot to tell. In the United States, they had a tax, a stupid tax. It's called the chicken tax. And if it doesn't make any sense why they call it the chicken tax to you, it, it doesn't make any sense to anyone. It, it was a stupid tax. But it was called the chicken tax 
and it was a tax on trucks, small light trucks from other countries. It was a tariff. And so in order to get around the chicken tax, Subaru put little chairs in the bed of these. And we did get these in the United States as the Subaru Brat. But it had chairs in the back. And I don't think there were even seat belts back there. There were handles. There were little, they were little like flexible handles that you would just sort of hold on while you're bouncing in the, around in the back of the truck. And I remember riding in the back of one of these when I was a kid. This right here is why I own a Suzuki Jimny, because I wanted something just like this, but maybe a little newer and more reliable. But really, this is what I want. Kimberly, I don't know what that is. Austin Kimberly. Never heard of it. I like the color. Sandman. You might be wondering, why are you so excited? You've seen a Sandman before. You've shown us the Sandman before. Yes, I have, but I have not shown you this. The text, the Sandman on the back. I love this font. It's amazing. This is, I feel like I'm eating mushrooms in 1977. So when I talk about muscle cars, from the muscle car era in unusual colors, and I talk about how exciting it is to see a pink car, well, if you're maybe an old timer, you might say, well, there used to be a lot of pink cars. One thing that I didn't realize when I started going to old car museums is when I saw cars like this in colors like this, I assumed that this was, had been custom painted. Someone just got the idea in their head, I'm gonna make my Chevy pink. But in fact, in the old days, unusual colors were very common. And I'm talking all the way back to the 20s. They had purple cars and orange cars and green cars back when the photographs were all black and white. And we had no idea what color they were until you go to a museum. And it turns out cars used to be colorful. We only brought some of that back in the muscle car era. And now we've just pretty much forgotten about making cars colorful. They are white, gray, black, that's it. I know what this is. It's a Leyland P76. I'm learning. International Scout. I was going to make some joke about how they imported this from the US, and I see these at all the old classic 4x4 shows. But this is right hand drive. So I have a feeling that someone in the comments is going to explain to me that the International Scout might have actually been sold in Australia. Second generation MR2. This was a factory color. It was an uncommon factory color. Mount Panorama Bathurst. We have to talk about Buicks, Buick Roadmaster. Some of the commenters pointed out that some Buicks were sold in Australia originally, so they weren't all imported. Cars used to have real wood on them and it was seen as a symbol of luxury and so when they stopped putting real wood on cars they started putting fake wood on cars and then that quickly became seen as a symbol of crappiness <laughs> where the concept of a trunk came from is when you used to actually put a trunk on the back of your car a trunk a wooden trunk but in australia it's called a boot nobody knows why except the commenters <laughs> I know where Yunter is. The world's skinniest magician. Can he squeeze between these objects? Can he squeeze between those objects? Skinny power. Well, that sounds a little suspect. I'm not sure I'm on board with that. Superhubert.com. I'm not saying to go to that website. I'm just saying it is a website that exists. I have no clue what's on the website, so I'm not endorsing Superhubert.com. Don't get me wrong. But I'm not not endorsing it. So there's a Mazda van over here, and I thought it looked a lot like a Toyota Hiace. 
And I thought, okay, well, that's cool. There's a Mazda version of a high ace but it also has a camper on top. So now I'm falling more and more in love. There's a camper on top. Mazda something with a camper on top. Ah, Pontiac GTO. I, I see there's a car, car shows in the US all the time. The Leyland Super Comet. I don't know what it is. I've never seen one before. The Leyland Super Comet. I would say, oh, we see these at all the truck shows, but I've never actually gone to a truck show. So, so yeah, this is a beautiful piece of Americana. Well, yeah, I, I got to sing the song. Pop up, up and down headlights. Pop up, up and down headlights. Pop up, up and down headlights. That's not my song. I didn't write that song. Somebody else wrote that song. I'm going to get copyright flagged for that one. Exactly. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. But is that an accident or on purpose? Oh, there we go. It's, I try and make it on purpose. But how does it happen? What makes them wink? It's um, the original. The original would be like this, where I'd turn it on and turn it off, and it'd have a delay. Okay. But I reduce the delay, and that's the effect that I get. I get a wave, or if I get it just right, I can get one down and one coming up and winking. No, there's more cars this way too. There's more cars this way, this way, and this way. No, it's cool. I'm sure you'll find some more car shows around the country. Oh, yeah. That's exactly the goal. It's like just trying to hit every every town, every museum, every car show. So I used to have Hot Wheels in the shape, and this just brings back all those memories. I think that's why I like cars so much, and I like buying cars and collecting cars and driving cars. I've been collecting cars my whole life. It's just that the cars I used to collect were only this big. It's a Ford Fairmont Ghia. The thing is that people told me about the Fairmont is I make fun of the Fairmont because in the US, the Fairmont was just a crappy Ford, but here, the Fairmont was the nicer version of the Falcon, as I understand it. So if you had the Fairmont, you had a, a better car. Look at these wheels. Ford branded wheels, but they're, I've never seen a Ford wheel that looked anything like that. Ford Falcon Youth. And look at this font. It comes from a time when people were happy and confident. They believed that success was possible. They believed that prosperity was our future. They believed that human thriving was everyone's goal. I don't know what we're in now. It's a, it's a different kind of time. Ford Escort. Yes, we had a thing called a Ford Escort in the United States, but that was about as exciting as the Ford Fairmont. It was a boring car, okay? Ford Escorts in Australia and Europe, they were cool cars. Some sort of small hatchback, one one point six. I've never seen this before. Built with pride by the people of Ford Australia. Okay, that's a good hint. I love a lot of different types of cars, but you might pick up that one of my favorites is just smaller hatchbacks. And we don't have smaller hatchbacks in the U.S. anymore, and don't really have them here anymore either. Just cars are getting bigger and bigger all the time. Chevy Camaro, boring. We got these everywhere. This Ford kind of looks like it's on the Panther platform, which is where they they made the police cars and they made the taxis and they made the limos on the Panther platform. But I'm not really sure if that's what this is or not. Come this way. Come on, this way. It's a Ford Fairlane Gia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Heavy Camaro. No, 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 no. Boring. Boring. People tell me, I, I said that Australia really likes their V6s, and most people said, well, no, it's really all straight sixes. They said that the Ford had the Barra motor. So does yours yes. have the Barra motor? Yes, they're a dual Everett cam. Is it a turbo? Turbo, yeah. They're Australia's equivalent of the 2J. Okay. So they don't have a Siamese ball like the 2J, but they're a big stroke, they can handle massive power. Okay. Um, I've seen them, you know, a stock block run 2,000 plus horsepower, uh -huh. you know, without, without having to change the block or go to... This is the modern Land Cruiser I've been talking about that hasn't changed since back in the 80s. 
you can't afford one. But it's a very versatile vehicle. And, and nobody knows why they're so expensive. Because if you ask people about it, they'll say, oh, it's a terrible ride. It's a terrible vehicle. But the one thing it is, is reliable. Sports cat. I'm in Australasia, so I got some Australasian food. That was the Broke Village Fair. It was much larger and much more awesome than expected. So thank you guys for recommending that to me. And please continue recommending every show that you can think of that I have never heard of and every museum that I've never been to. Ever since I've come to Australia, this sign has been bugging me. In the United States, the car is flat and there are two S curves in parallel because that's how a car would skid the wheels would remain parallel. There's no way to have your wheels cross one another while skidding. Furthermore, when you are having problems with traction, your car is unlikely to go up on two wheels. It takes a little bit of traction to get your car up on two wheels. Everyone thinks they're making the world a better place. If you travel from Sydney to Broke, or from Broke to Sydney, take the mountain roads. Don't take the highways. You will thank me. I'm Wasteland Firebird. Thank you for inviting me into your home or onto your portable device. Thanks to Mad Skelly for the camera work. I love it. I love the pink. I don't look girly, but I am. Oh my god, look at the interior of this. Oh, it's so cute. This would be what Barbie would have. This is Barbie's car.